You're listening to 91.3 FM, WCW in Worcester, Massachusetts. If you're not catching us on 91.3 FM, hopefully you're catching us on our YouTube channel, Radio of Horror. And tonight on the show, we have artist, comic book artist on the show with us, Matt Frank from uh, IDW's Godzilla Books, along with several other projects that he's worked on. Thank you for coming on the show with us, Matt. Hey, thanks for having me. I am uh, I know this has been a long time in coming, and I'm glad to finally uh, be on the show. Uh, Matt, have you always had a kind of a... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Have you always had a uh, desire to draw giant kaiju monsters, even when you were a kid? Where did that all start? Oh, sure, sure. I mean, w- well, when you're a kid, you know, you, you want to draw because drawing is just something something you could do with your hands. You know, it's just something to keep you busy, really. But I always liked monsters. I always liked dinosaurs and stuff, and um, I uh, I like to draw them and. I just sort of parlayed that into a marketable skill as I got older because I just I, I also, you know, read a lot of comics growing up and I sort of had these these kind of sights set on maybe being a comic book artist. Basically I was just looking for an excuse to do nothing but draw monsters. I mean I draw other stuff, but monsters are sort of where I want to where where I'm where my happy place is. <laughs> um and you've worked on, let's see, one, two, three, four, five Godzilla books. Is that correct? Um, yeah, I believe that is true. I, I did uh, I did covers for Kingdom of Monsters. I did covers for History's Greatest Monster. These are all from IDW, of course. Yeah. Um, I was the uh, I was a story co developer, uh, artist, and uh, cover artist and interior artist for Rulers of Earth. And I contributed uh, the first issues of both Godzilla Legends and Godzilla Rage Across Time. Out of all the monsters in the Godzilla books that you've had to draw, which I'm assuming almost every one of his uh, enemies appeared in your book, correct? Almost every one of them, yeah. We, we had our druthers for most of the Pantheon, <laughs> Is there any one particular monster that you didn't get to draw that you were really interested in drawing? Because I, I, I'll be honest, I didn't read every single one of Rulers of Monsters, so I might have missed a, a monster here or there. Oh, that's all right. I, um, I will hold it against you. I mean, there are 25 issues. It, it, um, but um, <laughs> uh, that's actually a really good question. Since we, we, got to, we got nearly every... I mean, I guess out of the whole Toho monsters, out of all the, all the Godzilla family... Um, I was a little bummed I didn't get to really uh, do something with Hedera because the, that's that's the smog monster because uh, I got to draw a cover of Hedera for for Kingdom of Monsters, but for Rulers of Earth, um, I think there was I think Hedera only appeared in one panel, and it was like uh like just the top of its head, um. And I would have loved to have really leaned in and done something really cool with Hedera since it's kind of this living mass of, of sludge with these big, terrifying eyes. So that would have been really cool, and unfortunately we didn't really get to do anything with it. But this series, of course, was the first appearances of uh, several, several big Godzilla characters who had never appeared in comics before, such as Gazora, Manda, Jet Jaguar, Gyra, Sandra, Varan... King Caesar, Mogira, Orga, and Biolante. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of monsters. What was the most challenging one to draw? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, I think it would have to be Mecha King Ghidorah, because uh, that version of the character is uh, pretty complicated visually. Um I believe the original design was by either uh, Shinji Nishikawa or Hadouken Ryu. Uh, I, 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 uh, rem- I have an art book of that somewhere around here. And that original design, it's so, like, it's very imposing. You know, King Ghidorah is a very imposing character. Uh, but the mecha version, it has so many little details and so many very solid geometric shapes that it makes it hard to... Uh, kind of keep track of it because I, you know, plus monsters with multiple limbs are always more difficult. Like Kumanga, the giant spider, you have to always keep an eye on where all of the legs are. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I would have to say maybe Mecha King Ghidorah was the most challenging. 
And you've also drawn uh, Transformers as well. A lot of people say Transformers are really hard to draw too. Is that is that true? Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. Tr- uh, let me just clarify. You're asking if the Transformers were difficult to draw. Right. Yes. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. I. Uh, I. Uh, uh, yeah, the, they can be. They can be fairly time consuming um, because there are a lot of little details. I mean, there's there are some artists who have managed to get around that, you know, by stylizing them a certain way. But the way I like to draw them l- typically means I lean into more detailed stuff, and as a result, uh, they wind up taking a little longer because you know you have to you have to keep track of the geometry of them and how they fit into a space and how their bodies move and you have to keep track of the geometry of those moving parts. Mm -hmm. So that can be pretty difficult, especially when you're dealing with a lot of characters that have a lot of really specific looks to them. And you have to be like, all right, which version of these transformers am I, am I working with? (laughs) So that can be a little truck. That can be a little tricky. Um, You seem to be working a lot with like Hasbro related properties. Uh, Godzilla, toys are not through hasbro correct no the godzilla toys are through bandai okay um it's 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 sorry go ahead i know that idw is planning their next big crossover event coming this summer is going to be uh the probably the biggest one of all time uh with their hasbro properties and you having worked on transformers previously i was curious if you're going to be working on any part of it including covers unicron is coming yeah, I'm I'm personally pretty excited for that. I think it's going to be really cool. I'm not attached to any of that. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the um, a lot of the artists who worked with IDW when uh, back when I was working with uh, the company, uh, a lot of us aren't working with them anymore. Uh, just because um, stuff cycles through, you work on a project for a while and then you move on, and uh, or they or they want to they want to cycle through new artists and stuff. It just kind of, you know, it's. Uh, I would have liked to have like done a Unicron cover, but eh, it's not the way things go, unfortunately. So, I've got I've got other stuff keeping me busy anyway. That's uh, that's too bad. The um, the reason I bring it up is uh, one of the newest issues of the Lost Light actually ends with two characters who got blasted out into space, uh, being found by a giant round thing that's covered in light. You can't quite see it, but it says, "You belong to me now." Ooh, I like that. Yes. I like that. So there's that's really cool. It's Unicron, but he calls himself the Grand Architect. And Unicron is the chaos bringer of destruction, and an architect is not a destructor. So I'm wondering what that means. That is that is interesting. That is odd. I'll admit I'm also a little out of the loop on the comics because um, it's actually when you work in comics, it's actually hard to stay up on them because you know you, you, you some sometimes you know you've you've uh, you'll go to the comic book shop and I'll be like, Oh man, this looks like an interesting new book. I'm going to buy this. And it's going to go on this pile of unread books that I have. What are you working on right now? Right now I'm working on red man. Um, and red man is a, uh, is a, an old, uh, Japanese property. It's actually the same company that owns Ultraman. Okay. Um, yeah, and so we're working with uh, I'm working with Superaya Productions, and the publishing company is Phase Six. They're based out of they're based out of Tokyo, and they uh, were releasing my Godzilla comics in Japanese, and uh, then they kind of got a deal with Superaya to do Red Man because basically Red Man is sort of this kind of like a spinoff series from Ultraman. Um, they, it was this weird, obscure little like series of shorts that would play during a Japanese kids' variety show in the seventies, and it was about this this hero, this superhero who kind of looks like Ultraman, except he's he's more got more red on him, and he's just there. He's running around the wilderness, <laughs> hunting down and savagely murdering kaiju, <laughs> and it was so over the top and it was so strange that. Uh, my publisher rediscovered it on YouTube and uh, well, rather my editor. And he was like, we have to do a comic about this. And here we are. Now I'm writing and drawing a comic about this obscure Japanese superhero from 1972, 73. <laughs> do you have your own property that you're, uh, 
uh, going to be working on itself, like your own original creator or own property? Not maybe not give it away, but just give us like a hint of you know maybe something you're doing yourself. That's not somebody else's. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I I actually have um, several. Uh, projects that I've been working on for a couple of years with a few with a few other writers that I've known, you know. I um, but I have one that I'm working on. I've got a publisher who's interested in it. Uh, you know, it's just a question of making time for it and actually sitting down and working on it. Um, I can't say much, but it'll be a little different from what I usually do. It won't be it won't be giant monster related, but it will be uh, like undeniably people will look at it and say like, okay, this is definitely Matt Frank's like, this is, this is still his wheelhouse. Gotcha. So hopefully I'll get it done and <laughs> I can share it with the world. If, if anyone ever wants to commission you for artwork, do you have uh, what's uh, what do you, um, how long does it take you normally to do a piece? Like a well, it, it, it really cover. depends on the piece. Like on average I can do um, like an inked comic page in like a day uh, maybe a little more. Um, I can do like, but if you want, if you want something like a cover style or like a bigger, more elaborate piece, those will take a little longer. Those will take north of two to three days oh, because I, I, I mean, unless I'm booking it, but generally I like to leave myself two to three, maybe even four days for a little breathing room so I can sketch it out, uh, uh, like like conceptualize it, sketch it out ink it, scan it, and color it. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's generally how, that's generally the time frame for stuff like that. Smaller illustrations don't take as long, you know, like if you just want like a little, like people come up to me at conventions and they want like a quick character sketch, mm -hmm. those generally only take me maybe half an hour to an hour. Gotcha. What, um, yeah. what would you say, going back to Godzilla really quick, uh, just because your, I mean, of course your email is Mattzilla, of course. <laughs> really nice. Yeah. Uh, what would you say is your favorite Godzilla movie of all time? Oh, oh, baby. Um, <laughs> well, I have a list of top five, but I won't go into them right now. Um, usually the one that, that gets to the top of my list is, um, Godzilla, Mothra, King Ghidorah, Giant Monsters, All Out Attack, which is the film from 2001. Yep. And yeah, and it's um it 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 just that movie to me is I think that was the last Godzilla movie that really blew me away where I was like where I was just like man, it, it fires on all cylinders. It's got a great cast. It's it's human story is is pretty interesting and engaging and you know, the monster stuff is really great. And it's actually about something like it's actually got some fairly heavy themes about, uh, you know, cultural identity and, you know, how we have to take responsibility for our actions as a culture. And, um, you know, like and it's about generational divides and all this stuff. So I, I think it's I think it's a pretty, pretty damn good movie i don't know if we can curse on this or not but <laughs> damn it's okay nothing else <laughs> no okay. nothing else all right yeah so that's what it is the damn good movie um well hey matt why don't you give away uh how people can uh follow your work and uh keep up to date with whatever you're working on as well as checking out anything that you happen to put out in uh you know uh, on your deviant art <laughs> sure sure um i'm working on getting a fully functional website back up it used to be mattfrankart.com but the website's down Generally, if you just Google Matt Frank and Godzilla, you'll find my stuff. Um, Kaiju Samurai on DeviantArt is where I tend to post a lot of my stuff. I just uh, posted a new Godzilla Neo, which is uh, a series of redesigns I did for fun back in the early 2000s. And I'm, I'm revisiting that because uh, it seemed like it would be fun. Um, I've got a couple of other uh, places as well. Uh, Mattzilla85 is my, uh, that's my Facebook and Instagram. Um, and the very maturely titled Spankzilla85 is my Twitter and my Tumblr. So <laughs> I'm an adult. Gotcha. Um, well, hey, Matt, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, come on the show. I really appreciate it. It was great meeting you at the, I think, Granite State Comic Con uh, last September, I believe. 
Yeah, that was that was really fun. It was a fun little show. I had I had I have fun whenever I come up north, and I'm planning on doing it again sometime this year. So. So yeah. Oh, uh, so the next one September, you mean? Oh, um, I'm not sure if it's going to be Granite State specifically, but I might be coming up to uh, hang out with uh, my buddy Jeremy Robinson, who is the uh, the writer of Project Nemesis. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if we're going to be doing any events or not, but um, hopefully we will do something. Fantastic. Looking forward to it, man. Uh, hope uh, to uh, get a chance to uh, talk with you again in person. Uh, wish you the best of luck with your current project, uh, Red Man, I think you said it was. Thank you so much.